to do the whole house. Just turn to the person on the side of you, began to clap in their face and say, I'm glad you survived. I don't know what you survived, but I am so glad that you survived. Thank you so very much. Thank you, Pastor. We appreciate you. Thank you for letting me come. I have so many good friends and cousins here. We just bless God. Listen, let's go to the book of Hosea 2 and 15, Revelations 3 and 8. Hosea 2, 15, Revelation 3 and 8. While you're going, those of you that spend time on social media, go out to JoyceRogers.org, JoyceRogers.com. Follow me on the official Facebook and follow me at Miss Joyce Rogers on Twitter. Hosea 2, 15. And I will give her her vineyards from thence and a valley of acor for a door of hope. And she shall sing there as in the days of her youth. And as in the days when she came up out of the land of Egypt. Revelations 3 and 8 says, I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door, an open door that no man can shut. For thou hast little strength and hast kept my word and has not denied my name. I have set before thee an open door and no man can shut. I want to leave in this house for this empowerment wrap up and I know you feel empowered by the power of the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit. Whichever one is holy and I've got it. I want to leave in this house that this is your time to live an amazing life through an open door. Just don't talk to anyone, but put your hands on yourself and say, I'm living an amazing life through open doors. I just believe that God is setting us up. That this is our time to walk through amazing doors. If I can just get about 50 people to scream amazing. I believe as we look at the definition of that word, I believe that God is about to do something impossible to believe. He's not going to only blow your mind, but he's going to blow the minds of the people that know you. I believe that God is getting ready to do something extraordinary for you and your household. As you advance, as you advance through amazing doors, and you shall advance through amazing doors after attending such a phenomenal conference, you shall advance through amazing doors. So I speak doing your advancement uncommon possibility. I speak that God shall grant unto you opportunities out of the ordinary. That God shall allow you to do unusual things. Exceptional things shall come out of your mouth and out of your household. Remarkable, great, unspecified things are about to take place in your life for the remaining of this year. Yes, this is the end. We're approaching the fourth quarter of 2017, October, November, December. And there have been some devastating things 
must have happened during the first, the second, and the third quarter. But I believe that God is going to reward the body of Christ in the fourth quarter. I believe remarkable, uncommon experiences are about to take place in the life of the believer. I came to tell you that your labor is not in vain. Oh, just somebody scream, it's not in vain. 1 Corinthians 2 and 9, 1 Corinthians 2 and 9 says, But as it is written, I hath not seen, nor ear heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man, if I can get 50 people to scream, the things, the things which God has prepared for them that love him, but God has revealed them unto us by the Spirit, for the Spirit searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. I haven't seen, ear hasn't heard, neither has it entered into your heart the things, somebody screamed, prepared. That word prepared means that he has been proactive. He has gone before you. He knows what you have need of even before you ask him. While you're trying to figure it out, he's already worked it out. All he wants you to do is call him. And he said, if you call me, I've already answered. If you knock, I've already opened the door. So this is your season to walk through open doors living an amazing life. It is the time the Message Bible says, and I want to read this same passage of scripture from the Message Bible. It said, no one ever seen or heard anything quite like this. What God is about to do for you, the word in the message Bible said, uh, you said no one has ever seen or heard anything like this. Uh, no so much as uh, imagine anything quite like this. Uh, what God has uh, arranged uh, for those that love him. Uh, oh, it is amazing. Uh, what God has arranged. I, I, can, I can identify with the, the, uh, the concept uh, of arranging because my great niece left for school and I had told her a couple of years ago if you graduate from high school if you graduate with honors if you go to a prominent junior senior college auntie is going to make sure that you want for nothing her mother is not able to do what auntie can do so auntie mom had promised her if you meet the conditions of auntie mom's re requisition or requirements then you won't want for anything when she graduated she reminded me I made A's <laughs> I didn't do this I didn't do that and now I'm accepted at the school so auntie it's time for you to come on up with what you promised well I began to write a couple of checks because I had put things on reserve I had prepared some things for her before she graduated all she had to do was meet the condition and the requirements now if auntie mom can do that what about the God that you serve he has somebody scream amazing he has been proactive he has, ain't nobody seen. Can I just do my language? Ain't nobody seen what's going to happen to you. It's time for you to advance. Somebody scream advance. There are spiritual doors. There are spiritual doors that God wants to open to you in this season. This is a season of positioning. To position ourselves for advancement. You are about to advance through the doors that are apparent. There shall be new doors in your lives. New doors in the lives of your family. New doors in your businesses. And in spite of what the enemy has tried to do, new doors in your churches. Where you are now in life, where you are right now in life, you should always be ready for new doors to open unto you. You should walk around looking for new doors because we're embarking into new areas that we've never been in before. We're praying about opportunities that we've never had before. So what about you, my brothers and my sisters? What door would the Lord have for you 
to do in this period of your life of transition. What opportunities, what opportunities could be in front of you? Uh, what opportunities waiting for you to knock, uh, waiting for you to enter in? God said to you in Revelation 3 and 8, I know your works. Uh, and I have set before you an open door that no, you don't have to like me, but you can't shut my door. <laughs> an open door that no, you don't, I don't have to be your cup of tea or your favorite fire. You cannot shut my door. You didn't open my door and you can't shut my door. Behold, I sat before you. An open door that no man can shut. It said, I have set before you. Somebody scream set. God has placed, God has stabilized before me that which is apparent. Yes, God has set before me an open door that no man can shut. You see, God has a plan for your life. God has a strategy for your life. He knows what you have need of even before you ask him. Psalm 139, 13 and 16 said that I was made from, you were made from your, his image. You were made out of his wounds. You're fearfully and wonderfully made. And not only are thou fearfully and wonderfully made, but he talks about I made you in secret. I know you. Because I made you in secret. I, I didn't expose you. I hid you where the devil couldn't find you. I took you through trials and tribulations that would have been humiliating and embarrassment. But I crafted you in secret. I know every detail of what you're going through. But I also know what lies ahead. He feels every minute of your life. And he has set before you an amazing door. Now I prayers, pastors, members, uh, delegates. Uh, our prayers at the empowerment conference, our prayers now should be, Lord, show me the door you have set before me. Uh, show, do I have anybody up in here that'll say, Lord, show me the door that you've opened before me. Somebody scream amazing. Show me the door. Open my eyes to see. Give me insight and revelation. 1 Corinthians 16 and 9 says it like this. For a great and effective door has been opened unto me. Hey, but there are many haters. There are many adversaries. Paul expresses in this text of 1 Corinthians 16 and 9 that at a very pivotal time of his life. Just think about it. In this present world, in this present age, there's no such thing as an authentic anointing ministry, nor an authentic anointing calling, nor an authentic anointing church with thy problems and oppositions of some sort. It doesn't matter how small your church is, how large your church is, there will be problems. If you're not facing problems, you're headed toward problems. If you're not headed toward problems, you are the problem. But there will always be problems. There will always be problems and, and Satan will see to it. Uh, listen, a work that has little oppositions from the antagonistic system of Satan is one that is doing little work for the Lord. Uh, if no one is bothering you, you ain't doing nothing. Uh, if no one is getting on your nerves, you're not. But the enemy knows that you are a force to be reckoned with. Uh, look at somebody and say, I'm bad. Uh, and I'm a force to be reckoned. They told me this is a pastor's conference. 
Ephesus, a force to be working with. So Paul, who's now in Ephesus, he was not intimidated, nor in spite of the fierce opposition. Matter, matter of fact, matter of fact, partially because of the oppositions and through the word of the Lord the church was growing mightily and prevailing in Ephesus but while it was growing that was Acts 19 and 20 it comes up and says but there are many adversaries if your door is great your adversary is great if your door is little your adversary is little great doors great adversary. But for every door that God has planned for you, every door that God has planned for you, there are opponents and there are adversaries who desire to shut the door and stop you from entering into the door. But somebody screamed, the devil is a liar. My question on the floor to you leaders uh, is what what doors, uh, what are your new doors? Uh, because again, Revelation 3 and 8 says, I've set before you an open door. Whoever you are, God has set before you an open door. Teenager, young adult, uh, young married, uh, widowed, uh, employed, unemployed, prospering business or bankruptcy. God has set before you an open door. You may be happy or unhappy, satisfied or dissatisfied, filled with expectation or having an empty soul, but I come to empower you tonight to, to let you know that God has set before you an open, can I get somebody to scream, open door! Whomever, whoever you are, whoever you are, wherever you are, God has set before you an open door. Now get the revelation of this. God has set before you an open door. And the same God that positioned before you an open door is saying to you tonight, I have set before you an open door and I will keep the door open open until you come in. I'm not going to shut it until you come in. You don't have to worry because it's your door and I'll keep it open until you come into the door. Somebody say yes! I'll keep the door open. Even when you're discouraged, I'll keep the door open. When you don't have the strength to must up the ability to put one foot in front of the other, I'll keep the door open by grace. Somebody say grace. I'm getting ready to wrap it up, but by grace, I'll keep the door open until you're able to enter. Sometimes an open door is set before us, but we're so troubled, shame the devil and tell the truth. We're so troubled and we're so weak that we can hardly walk through the open door. But God said, I'll be your door stopper. I'll hold the door open until you come in. As you stand on the threshold, my brothers and sisters, of this fourth quarter, this new dimension in your life, uh, what doors again have God placed in front of you? What doors might God want to open for you? There are three things, uh, uh, three doors I want to leave in this house because I want you to get ready to advance. Uh, somebody look at your neighbor and say, hey, 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 hey. <laughs> Get ready to advance through an open door and tell them, hey, it's going to be amazing. Get ready to advance through an open door. Well, what, what are the three areas I want to extract from this? The first area is that I believe that God is opening a door of new faith adventures. Say that with me. New faith adventures. Something unusual and exciting is about to happen up in your house. Something unusual and exciting is about to happen in your life, in your ministry, on your job, with your children, with your children, children. Something unusual and exciting is about to bring joy and laughter back into your life. Acts 14. 
14 and 27 said, Now when they had come and gathered the church together, they reported all that God had done and that he had opened a door of faith. So now my question to you is what faith doors does God want to open unto you? God wants you to have the faith. Oh, listen, your days of climbing mountain are over. You're not a mountain climber. Do not exert your energy climbing mountain. But you have to have the faith to speak unto the mountain and the mountain has to get out of your way you don't even have to have the faith the size of the mustard seed but if you just have the faith the size of the chippings of the mustard seed you can say to the mountain move and if you have the faith God shall release something big in your life just look at your neighbor and say by faith I pronounce B-I-G in your life. Now let me tell you what the acronym B-I-G is. It is believe in God. And if you believe in God, nothing shall be impossible to them that believe in God. If you believe in God. If you have the faith to believe, it's already done. In order to step through the faith door, you have to have faith to come out of your comfort zone. Look at somebody and say, come out, come out, come out, wherever you are. Come out of your comfort zone. It's easy to ask God to give you faith to walk on the water. But if you don't get out of the boat, you'll never know to get your feet wet I'm talking to some wet feet people somebody scream get out of the boat get out of the boat get out of the boat say yes oh yeah yes get out of the boat shame the devil and tell the truth there are areas where we feel comfortable moving out in faith but there, and there are areas that make us nervous for the remaining of this year. My prayer is that God agitates your comfort zone. God irritates your comfort zone until you cannot be comfortable in that place anymore. But you're going to take courage and lunge out into the deep. It's time to take a leap of faith. Look at somebody say leap, 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 leap. Leap a leap of faith so you can go in the new faith adventures. The next thing a God is going to do, he's going to allow you to go through an open door of great opportunities. Somebody say great opportunity. First Corinthians 16 and 9 says, For a great and effective door is open unto me, but there are many adversaries. What is it that might keep you from going through a great door? Well, I come to tell you what keeps us from going through great doors and experiencing great opportunity is a good opportunity. The enemy to great is good. Your days of doing good is over now. You've got to lodge out into the deep and do something great. What is the greatest enemy to great? It is good. Many people have good marriages, but they don't have great ones. They have good prayer lives, but they don't have great prayer lives. You Do you know why? me why because the enemy of great opportunity is learning to love good to the place that it satisfied the soul and there is no desire to go further I cancel every satisfied feeling because you've done good but this is your season to do something great don't Talk to anybody around you. Put your hand on yourself and say, I'm encouraged. 
to do something great. I feel in this house there's a shift in the house. Somebody say shift. There's a shift in the house. He's shifting you from good to great. He's shifting you from impossible to mission impossible. He's shifting you to higher place in Christ Jesus. Can somebody say shift? Shift. Shift. It's time to intensify your worship. It's time to penetrate evangelism. It's time to give more of yourself because you're growing higher and higher. Do not settle for status quo because my eye is on the prize of Jesus Christ. I'm called going on higher. Do I have anybody up in here that said no more status quo, but I'm moving to the next level. So now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all I could ask according to the power is at work in me. I see you in the future. And you look much better than you do right now. Say yes. 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 My time is up. My time is up. But I'm advancing to new places in God. I know in my process of advancing, there are many adversaries that have gotten in my way, but I'm not intimidated by my adversary. I'm not intimidated by trial, tribulation, and trouble because I know that it is through my trials that the trying of your faith being much more pressure than that of silver gold that perish though it be tried in the fire it may come out as glory honor and praise so whatever I'm going through it's gonna come out as glory honor and praise at the revelation of God so I'm walking through the door but there's one more door and I'm gonna leave it with it I want to bless someone that isn't where you should be. Do not allow the enemy to stop you from working on the kingdom. Because there is a door that Hosea 2 and 15 talks about. He said, I will give you vineyards from this and a valley of acorn. Somebody scream acorn. A valley of acorn as a door of hope. Then you shall sing there. Well, what is a valley of acorn? Acorn is a place of sorrow. Acorn is a place of devastation. Acorn is a place of grief. It was the place where Achan and his family were stoned to death after they had sinned and the sin was discovered. Yet in the place of devastation, yet in the place of depression, yet in the place of loneliness, yet in the place of heartbroken, yet in the place of being by myself, God said, I'm going to get down there with you and I'm going to provide for you an open door in the valley. Yea, do I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I, I, I will not fear no evil. Look at your neighbor. It's your neighbor. When you find yourself in the valley of Acorn, when you find yourself all by yourself, just look up and scream, open to me the door of hope, the door of hope, because my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus Christ. 
praise his righteousness all of the ground is sinking sand but oh Christ the solid rock I stand oh empowerment be not dismayed whatever betide you God will look at somebody say won't it do it God will take care I've said before you, my time is up, an open door, and no man can shut it. May I get you to double, get you to do two things, and I'm really sitting down. But just, just whatever your address is, whatever your address is, and, and I know a lot has been going on in Houston. Oh, but look at somebody and tell them, but I'm still here. And if you don't live here, we drove here, so we still here. We flew here. But get ready to scream your personal address. One, two, three. God told me to tell you that's the place he's opening the door. That's the place he's making a way. That's the place. So when you get home, the door is going to be open for you. When you get back to school, the door will be open for you. When you get back to church, the door will be open. Somebody scream, amazing door. Yeah, healing. Deliverance and breakthrough. If you will, just take somebody by their hand. Since my time is up, that hand that you're holding, I speak in this house, transferred anointing. May the anointing of the Holy Ghost that is in me transfer in you. May the power that is at work in me transfer in you. The woman with this, your blood never touched Jesus. Never, 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 never touched Jesus. She touched the blue cord and she touched the hem. In other words, she touched something that was touching Jesus. You're touching somebody that's touched Jesus. You're touching somebody that's been with Jesus. You're touching somebody that know you're Jesus. If you begin to pray for that person that you're holding, just begin all, come on, empower them, empower them with words of the Holy Spirit. Empower them, empower them, empower them. Come on, come on, cancel the assignment of the enemy. Undo what the devil has done. Put a roadblock in the plans of the enemy. Give them the voice of God. Lord, we lift your name on high. Give them the heart of God. Give them the mind of the Holy Ghost. Let your healing virtue flow. Let your healing virtue flow. Open up this man's understanding. Give them revelation for their ministry. Give them resources for their ministry. Give them strategies for their ministry. Bless their children. Bless their singleness. In the name.